What's going on everybody? Grim Repair here. Today I'm going to show you how to change out the rear brake shoes, bearings, and seals on the back of a full floater dually Ford F350. This is a Sterling 10.25 rear end, but it's going to be pretty similar for any full floating rear axle with drum brakes. The first thing we're going to do is pop the tools you're going to need. A 1 and 1 16th for the lug nuts, 7 16th, 5 8 extension, torque wrench, some way to drive out the bearing. I used a 2 inch, 3 quarter inch drive socket and an extension to drive the inner bearing out. Drum tool kit, brake drum tool kit comes with that and that. A way to pack the bearings, I used a handy packer, silicone, brake parts cleaner, caliper grease. Three quarter inch socket, also you need that. Three quarter inch wrench, vice grips, hammer, C clamp, and one of these spindle nut sockets. Jack and jack stands, a respirator, safety glasses, and I'm wearing gloves. There'll be links down below for all the parts, being the bearings, seals, and the pads, and the hardware kit down in the description. And we're going to loosen the lid on our master cylinder reservoir then we need to keep the wheels and the truck from rolling away we can't use the emergency brake while we're doing this because it'll be holding on to the drum while we try to pull it off so you got to use something to keep it from rolling and we're going to jack up the truck on the side that we're working on and i'm doing it right here on the axle where the spring is Right now we're gonna slide a jack stand under so it doesn't kill us. There we go. And we're gonna remove the wheels. This uses a one and one sixteenth inch inch size lug nut. should be wearing a respirator for this or a dust mask to keep the brake dust from getting into your lungs. Now we're going to remove these bolts here going into the axle shaft. On this one it's a 5 8 the service manual says you're supposed to replace these bolts and use new ones. Well, before we take them out, we're going to put a drain pan under there. Some fluid's going to leak out. Alright, this may be kind of stuck. It may not be, but we're just going to pull it out. like that and support it while we slide it out set it somewhere safe all right now if you look inside there there's a big spindle nut it uses a special type of socket and the nut on the other side I had to go clockwise with it to loosen it this other side's probably going to be just a normal nut uh, I got this kit here with a bunch of spindle nut sockets in it this is the one I'm going to be using and there'll be a link down below where you can get this but it just slides in there like that yeah this side's normal the other side is a reverse thread and it comes right out I set it on a towel keep it clean and this may or may not pull right off now if it doesn't you may have to go around the back and take the tension off of the self adjuster for the sh brake shoes. If the brake shoes are holding out, this may not come off, but let's give it a try. Oh, came right off. And now this should also pull right off. Nope. 
set this somewhere where it can drain out. There's fluid in it. And now that the outside bearing just comes right out, you want to inspect it, make sure there's no pitting or burn marks. But this back one has to be banged out. I'm going to let this drain. We'll come back and deal with this after we get the brake shoes off. But now let's say that your drum didn't come off because the shoes were binding up. What you're going to do is you're going to you're going to get one of these drum tool kits that comes with one of these. And there's a hole in the back side of the backing plate here. And it allows you to go in and through and turn this guy right here. So in order to turn this and take some of the tension off, we're going to come in through the hole in the back here. See the, the wrench there or the screwdriver type thing. And we're just turning this roller here, but we're going to turn it the other way. If it's clicking and sounding like it's turning real easy, you're going the wrong way. You want to be fighting this Paul here and that'll bring this in and the brake shoes will come in so on this side we would be moving the handle down same thing on the other side handle in down turns it in we're gonna need lots of towels for this job I'm also gonna wipe the oil and grease off of this so that the brake dust doesn't settle on there as much we're gonna inspect this for any gouges or burn marks it looks pretty good maybe stick this in here to keep it clean and what I like to do when I do these is take pictures of it you got a cell phone you can take pictures delete them you're not using film or anything anymore so it's not a big deal but just take a picture each step first thing we're gonna do is remove this emergency brake cable it's a three-quarter inch bolt and nut here you got to go around the back and hold this side. All right, we got our three quarter inch there. I'm going to hold the bolt on the back side. cable will come off now we're going to remove a small nut on the back side here on top to get the top piece to come out you want to note how all this sits up here and the nut on the back side of this is a 7 16 Right, and it's off. And this is just gonna pull out here. push it out a little with this I'm prying against the brake shoes since we're replacing them don't want to damage anything we're gonna keep there we go and now this part of the cable here can come out It's looped around this here and goes up there like that and this I had to press out on the other side I used a C clamp just to push this through to get this washer off that's holding this emergency brake cable on all right and since we got a hardware kit that comes with new adjuster everything springs and everything we don't have to worry too much about damaging anything what I'm gonna do next is pull these off that actually hold it to the backing plate and I'm gonna try and remove it all as one assembly that way I can just set it down and I know where everything goes on the new one I can just look at it to get these off we're gonna be using 
just a pair of vice grips. Just like that. Do the same thing on this side. All right, now when I pull it off, I wanna make sure that these um, arms that are on the brake uh, wheel cylinder here aren't coming out with it. So I gotta kinda pull this away and then pull it out. I could maybe even compress them in a little bit before I do it. go and now it all comes off as one assembly I can set it aside and then I'll know where everything goes on the new ones these here slide out the back we got new ones we're gonna put in just set them over here with the Everywhere where the shoes rest against the backing plate, you want to clean and lubricate with a little bit of caliper grease. Here's the caliper grease. Just a real thin layer all right now we're going to change our gloves we don't get any grease or anything on our new pads our shoes all right so we're just gonna lay the new stuff out just like the old stuff this one is has got the uh, cable loom I guess I don't know this thing where the cable goes on it and that one goes like that the circle thing here goes at the top and we got new brake hardware it's got new everything we're gonna have to take this apart and put a little bit of caliper grease on it keep it moving freely just a real thin layer you don't want it attracting too much brake dust it's doing more harm than good that way Probably should have done this before we changed our gloves. We're just gonna roll it back in almost all the way. All right, leaving about a quarter inch out and it's gonna go in this way. Got this X here. It's gonna go in to this groove here on the shoe. The other side's gonna go like that. Now we're gonna put the springs in and you're just going to look on the old ones to see which hole they go in. It's going to go like that. Just pick it up, slide it over. There you go. Just like that. And that top one's in. Now we're going to do the bottom spring. Which is this one. And again, just note how it is over here. And we're going to just copy that but it's gonna go in these holes. Just 
sort of like that. And it's going to stretch over to that hole there. Just like that. Okay. Now we got to put this adjuster on. And it's going to go just like that. And this just slides in. Onto this peg here. Go ahead and put the spring on first. There we go. Just slide it in. There we go. Now it's holding it in with the small part of that hole. And pull it down and pull the spring up and over. Like that. There we go. Some of these things in here we're not going to need. Probably for another application. But now these are going to go right there like that. Oop. And these are going to go in through the backing plate. Just like that. Now we're going to get this thing off of here. You want to pay attention to which way this is facing it needs to hook on down here it's gonna go on like this here's the new one and this may or may not come right off doesn't seem like it's going to so we're gonna get a C clamp and push it out we're gonna need that nut we took off of it so we don't damage the threads when we bang on it. Then we need a socket bigger than this, which this feels bigger, but we're gonna get a little bit bigger one. Get a 5 8 put it right over that. If we can get something to set this on, we bang on that and then this will come right out. All right, so I ended up rolling another jack over here to hold the bottom. I'm, I'm thinking this is gonna work. Got a 5 eighths underneath, 7 16 on top. There we go. Now we can slide on that new cable. Keep everything lined up like it is. Pull that nut back off. There's a washer here. It's in a, it's kind of a bushing, I guess. Slide it back down. All right, I'm probably gonna have to use a C-clamp now to press it back together. But you just wanna keep everything lined up. And we only need to put the socket on this side of it. I got a 7 16th socket here.
Okay. That should be on. There we go. Back together. And now this is going to go through here when we slide it all back up there. Pull these away from each other to get it over that right there. Slide that one in. Hold it against the backing plate. Pull this one out. here there we go all right now we gotta get it held up there with those springs Don't go super tight on it though. The backing plate isn't all that strong. Just enough to hold it there. All right, we gotta hold this side up and slide this on. Like that. Here's the vice grips. Grab onto it right here push it back and hook it just like that same thing on this side C-clamp can come out, and now this can go back up here, and this went underneath of here, underneath of those springs there. Remember the cable goes up and over this little bracket here. Tap this in a little bit. lined up top and bottom maybe have to pull on it a little there we go kind of lifting the pad out a little to get the bottom half in nut started and tighten it back up to 7 16 you can kind of see how far back this needs to come there's a groove there where it used to be Slide this back over here. 
hold the back side. Tighten it back up. All right, now this hook is gonna go in right there. Make sure that it's up over that, under this. Might be easier if we hook it and then put it over that. Let's see. Yeah, it is. All right, so we hooked it down there first. Now we're gonna pull it up and over this Tip this lever up here. There we go. Give this a little bit of slack. All right, now we can slide the drum back on, hopefully. If not, we're gonna move this and get it to come in to get these closer. And when we put it on there, we just want it to just to barely drag on the drum. And that's how you adjust that. And then it'll self-adjust on you later. Uh, after we get that on there, I'll show you how to change out the bearings and put it back together. All right, now we're gonna replace the bearings. I figure while we're in here, we might as well change them out. We don't wanna come back in here and do this again, um, but you can reuse these. And uh, you just grease them up, clean them out, grease them up, put them back in. I'm gonna show you how to get this seal and that inner bearing out. I'm gonna flip that around. Got it mounted back in the drum like that. And now we're gonna pound it through. like that Now we're going to clean it out, inspect the race. All right, and they look good. So we're going to go ahead and pack the new bearings. After we clean them out, if we're going to be reusing them, if we're getting new ones, we're just going to pack them. The inside one is too big to fit in my bearing packer, but that's this right here. I'm going to use it on the outside one. Show you how to use this if you're interested there's one in the description you just take the bearing put it in there take the center piece and you can see it come out over the rollers the grease I'm just gonna rotate it smear it around put it back in there pack it some more
wipe some of the excess smear it along the race on both inner and outer bearing All right now I gotta pack the other one and it's much bigger so it won't fit in there basically just gonna get a handful of grease out of your bucket and just scrape it in in there and it'll force its way through spin it keep doing it till it's good packed coat it with grease and we'll put it in there put some silicone on that new seal bang that in I'll show you how to do that all right that one's good and just drop it in there like that all right we're gonna try and get this grease out of this surface where the seal goes. We got our new seal. It says oil side on one end, and that side's gonna go toward the bearings. We're gonna put some silicone around the outside of it. Help it seal a little bit better. Real thin. Wrap a towel around the block of wood so I don't get any sawdust down in the housing. <clears throat> I want to make sure my hub is on flat surface. Set it on top of that. And just whack it in the middle. Now that seal's installed, good and straight. Wipe off the excess silicone. All right. Now we're going to put some grease on the inside of the outside bearing and put the outside bearing in. All right, now we're going to put the outside bearing in. wipe our hands off slide that back on putting it on with the uh, spindle nut and there's a tab here that's gonna go up top on that spindle there was a groove Put some grease on this spindle also get it good and clean too much on the inside or it'll end up in your brakes hold this outside bearing keeping it centered in the cone it's gonna want to get cockeyed in there I'm gonna push in while we spin it make sure it's seated feels like it. I don't see a bunch of grease in there, so that's good. 
Oh, there we go. Went in a little farther. I'm gonna put the spindle nut on with that tab up at the top. We're gonna turn it counterclockwise until it clicks while we push it on it gently. You, you should be able to hear it. There you go. You know that's the beginning of the thread, so you won't be cross-threading it. We're gonna go ahead and get our spindle socket. that in there turn it while we tighten it all right it's pretty much stopped now you can feel play in there you want a little bit of play so we're gonna loosen it Quarter turn there. See how that feels. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more. Let's see. So we loosen it a quarter. Let's go about half a quarter. I'd say about an eighth of a turn. Loosen it. You want a little bit of play, just a little tiny bit. You hear that? Just a little bit. All right, now we can put the drum on. Put this extra pin here at the top. Gonna go into that hole there. Make sure there's no grease or oil in here. We got a little bit there, so I'm gonna clean it out. slide on so we got to loosen that adjuster get them to come in a little pulling out the pole up here this thing spin it in the back so handle down is loosening loose on this side get it down together alright Make sure these are pushed in. And I'm gonna try and put the drum back on. I'd say we should loosen it a little bit more. 
I think that's pretty good. All right, I'm gonna put the axle shaft back in. Take some of this grease and we're gonna lubricate the O-ring on the axle shaft or you can replace it. Either way you wanna lubricate it. And the O-ring is right here on the end. All right, we're just gonna slide that back in there. Try to keep it supported. Don't force it. Once it hits the inside, you'll know. Then you gotta tip it up a little bit to get it to line up. Maybe rotate it at the same time. Spin this, get the holes to line up there, man, push it in. truck move on us. So I was able to pull the axle shaft in that extra sixteenth of an inch by tightening these bolts here. Uh, the torque spec on those bolts is 55 foot-pounds and again the service manual says you should replace them. We're going to go ahead and torque those down after we put the wheels on and lower the car down otherwise it's just going to spin. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Actually our hardware kit came with some of these boots to cover the back window so now that we're done adjusting back there we can go ahead and just pop these in keep the dirt out of there push it in on one side use a flathead screwdriver to push it in on the other there we go and now that's in Go ahead and put the wheels back on. I'm gonna spin. Well, I guess I'm not. That stud sticking out is over here. We keep that in mind. And there's a hole here. Keep that in mind also for this. Actually, that's for the stud sticking out, and this is gonna be down here on the bottom. raise the truck up a little bit. All right, get these lug nuts started. One and one sixteenth. crisscross pattern so the wheel seats evenly against the hub. All right, we're going to torque those down to 140 foot-pounds after we let the tire down.
All right, now we're gonna to torque these to 55 foot-pounds in a crisscross pattern. Those are five-eighths. All right, we got that tightened up. Now we're gonna go up front, make sure that the master cylinder reservoir lid is back on. And we're gonna wanna pump our brakes before we drive off, or the car may not stop as well. And that's it, high five, you did it. Thanks for watching.